cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and today's project is going to be pretty different because, believe it or not, there is no 3D printing involved. At its core, Make Anything is just about making all kinds of different cool things, so as much as I hate to admit it, 3D printing isn't always the best solution. So today we're being joined by Natalie. She's pretty artistic and she's going to lend a hand at making a giant paper mache whale. It should be cool, so let's go ahead and do it. To start off, we're going to use this aluminum wire to create a base over which we'll do our paper mache. We were initially looking for armature wire, but this general purpose aluminum wire is way cheaper and it should do the job just fine. So we got a few bundles of that, some masking tape to hold parts together, and some pliers and wire cutters to cut our wire. This 18 gauge wire was a little bit too flimsy, so we decided to fold it in half and twist it together to make a thicker wire. This is one way to do it, but we found it much easier using a power drill. That gave us this nice consistent twisted wire that holds its shape pretty well. With that, we'll start shaping our top and side profile of the whale, which will help establish the size of the whole model, as well as the general shape. As you can see, it's still pretty floppy, so we'll start adding some circular cross sections along the whole length of the whale to start giving it a more rigid structure. We're just eyeballing the size of these cross sections, making them as wide as we want the whale to be at different points along the length of the body. And we'll just wrap some masking tape around these wires to hold everything in place. We taped the rings to the top and bottom wires first, and then we went along and taped them to the side wires as well. We added some smaller features as well, like these rings that the front fins are gonna stick through, and we also added a few more rows of wire going along the whole length of the whale, just to make the mesh more detailed, because the more dense this wire is, the easier it will be to apply the paper mache later on. Of course, we need to make the fins as well, and we just traced this first one with a pencil, that way we can make a second one that matches it pretty closely. We added the tail fin as well, and here is our general base wire form. As you can see, we've already got a pretty clear idea of the shape of this entire model, and that's going to make it really nice and easy to go ahead and start doing the paper mache. So for that, we're going to use some Mod Podge, and add a little bit of water until it becomes the consistency of buttermilk. I actually added a bit too much water here, but it should still do the trick. And if you don't want to use Mod Podge, you can use Elmer's glue as well, which is a little bit cheaper. Next, we'll need to tear a bunch of strips of newspaper, and we want them to be maybe an inch to two inches thick. And once we've got a good pile, we can start coating the strips in our glue solution and laying them over our wire mesh. This is basically how we'll close all the gaps and create a consistent skin over our entire model. So you want the strips to overlap each other a bit, and after you've got one good layer, you can let it dry and apply another two or three layers of newspaper to get a good rigid structure. Here's how it looks when it's all dry, and we actually had the fins rigged to hang from the inside so that they could kind of sway about but you'll see as we move along that we ended up scrapping that idea to just have the fins hold in place. Now at this point you've got a solid newspaper skin that you could just paint and be done with it right there. But we wanted to smooth everything out a bit more, so we decided to try this technique we learned from ultimatepapermache.com where a lovely lady named Johnny Good teaches us how to make paper mache clay. Paper mache clay is basically this thick paste that you can spread over the model to give it a smoother, cleaner look. And the main ingredient is paper pulp, which you can get by dissolving cheap toilet paper with warm water. I mixed the paper and water in this plastic trash bin, and then I used a paint mixer attached to a drill to grind it all up into this fine pulp that's kind of got this cottage cheese consistency. From there, I'll go ahead and add the other ingredients. For one and a quarter cup of paper pulp, you're gonna add three quarters of a cup of Elmer's Glue Wall PVA glue, one cup of drywall joint compound, about two tablespoons of mineral oil or baby oil, and one half cup of white flour. I'll use my paint mixer one more time to mix everything into a nice consistent paste. 
Just so you know, in her original video, Johnny uses a kitchen stand mixer to do the job, but I found that this paint mixer works really well. That's it for making this paper mache clay. Now you should be able to spread it over your model, just as if you're frosting a cake. So we coated the whole whale with this stuff, and once it was dry, we made a few changes like thickening up the back of the tail here with some extra masking tape, and then we'll go over everything one more time with some more paste. This time, however, we decided to switch up the recipe a bit and forgo the paper altogether. So this time around, we just mixed the joint compound, flour, glue, and baby oil to make a smoother mixture. This stuff came out really creamy and smooth, and it was a joy to coat our model with. Although be aware you don't want to coat it on too thick or it could start to crack. Before the paste dried, we took the opportunity to carve in these ventral grooves that you see on the bottom of a humpback whale. As you can see, the edges of these grooves got a little messy, but another great thing about this paste is that you can sand it. So once it was dry, we sanded the whole whale and made sure to vacuum up all of the excess dust. Then it was finally time to start painting. So we started with this really bright blue, but it wasn't quite the look we wanted. So we added some black and got it a little more dull and desaturated, but it still looked a little too cartoonish. In the end, we settled for a really stark, contrasty look, with the top being a really dark gray and the bottom being a cream-colored white. Once most of the painting was done, we started adding more little details, like these tiny barnacles that we made out of Sculpey and glued all over the belly of the whale using tacky glue. We made the eyes of the whale using this same technique as well. Another really fun trick we played around with was putting paint onto a toothbrush and flicking that onto the whale to create these little flecks that help blend the black and white together. So we flicked some white paint onto the black coat as well as splattering some black paint onto the belly to create these really cool splatters. I really like this technique and I might have to use it for some future 3D printed models. Next, we decided to replace the kite string that we were hanging this whale from with something a little nicer looking and a little more permanent. So I used a hand drill to poke a hole in the back of the whale underneath that wire that the structure is made of to give it a nice strong point to hang from. Here's the steel cable I want to use to hang the whale, and normally you'll use these little metal crimps to close the loop, but I found that wrapping the cable in wire creates a pretty strong hold, so I'm going to use that. I'll feed the cable through that hole I made in the whale, close the loop, and then tie it off with that wire. Then I'll use these big wire cutters to trim the ends off and make everything look nice and clean. I'll make sure that this cable is the right length for how high I want to hang the whale, and then I'll tie the other end of the loop around that other hole I made in the whale. That's it! Now we can appreciate this big beautiful whale in all of its glory. One thing that's really cool about this paper mache technique is that the model is almost entirely hollow, and the materials themselves don't weigh too much. So it's really ideal for making a large model like this whale. Overall, I'm just really happy with how this whale turned out. It's got a really cool, artistic, natural look to it that makes for a pretty neat piece of decoration. All right, what a beautiful whale, don't you think? We had a lot of fun making this one. It had a, a lot of different and interesting techniques that we haven't tried before, so it was really fun to make. Was it fun to watch? Let me know. And uh, well, that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.